Hello everyone, I am historian Winky Bottom, here today on a very exciting expedition. For today, we're going to visit the archaeological ruins that were once the great lost city of Orlando. We'll be traversing up and down International Drive, once one of its main thoroughfares, now but a relic of a forgotten age. The first relic we arrive at today was once known as the Orange County Convention Center. Back before the sudden but inevitable collapse of their society in the year 2020, thousands upon thousands would gather in these temples to meet their cultural idols, many of whom were worshipped as gods. The visitors to these temples dressed in strange outfits, the meaning behind which is unfortunately lost to history, erased by the sands of time. Now what you see in front of you appears now to be simply a walkway with odd railings on either side. However, historians believe this was once something that was called a moving sidewalk. The Orlandians were a lazy people and therefore wished their walkways to do their moving for them and their ingenuity served them well. The streets of International Drive were once lined with many spectacular water fountains to welcome visitors from all around the world. However, now those fountains, much like the dreams of their society, have all but dried up. Now, up here we see a place labeled B.B. Kings. Archaeologists believe that this was once occupied by the great King B.B., a monarch who once ruled over the Kingdom of Orlando. And now we come to one of the most bizarre sites here on International Drive. That is, of course, the Wonderworks Upside Down Building. No one is entirely sure how this building was brought here, perhaps by some hurricane, perhaps the same event that created the nearby Typhoon Lagoon several miles away, or perhaps the same event that wound up devastating all of Orlando's civilizations. Our scientists are still baffled by this upside-down structure and how it remains so well intact. We have now arrived at the site of helicopter tours. Now, what was a helicopter? Impossible to know. However, research has shown that perhaps even though the Orlandians were a primitive society, they may have been capable of creating crude flying machines that would give visitors tours of this spectacular city. Now, over here, we have a Miller's Ale House. Several of these have been unearthed all around Orlando, and their exact purpose is still unknown. However, legends speak of something called a mountain melt, and some people believe the people of Miller's Ale House had the power to melt down entire mountains, which would explain why so much of the state of Florida is entirely flat. We have now arrived at what was once known as an olive garden, a bizarre name considering the inside is neither a garden nor particularly filled with olives. Historians believe this may have been some bizarre cult, as scrolls of the time proclaim, when you are here, your family. What atrocities would have have to have been committed to create pasta bowls that would never end? It simply horrifies me to think of. Just beyond the overgrown vegetation here, we can spot a Hooters. Now, what this was, according to our archaeologists, was a dining establishment of some type. However, it was considered somewhat controversial, most likely because it served owl meat. Over here, we have senior frogs. Loosely translated from the original Spanish, this means Mr. Frogs. Because of the use of Spanish here, we believe it may be a holdover left over from when the Spanish ruled this area prior to Orlando's thriving as a civilization. Just off of the street here, we come to a lost castle just behind a few smaller structures. Now, it is unknown whether this castle belonged to King Bibi or one of Orlando's other rulers, Queen Cinderella or King Hogwarts. Now we come to yet another bizarre sight, a sailing pirate ship here in the middle of Orlando. Now, Orlando was not located along the coast of Florida, but rather far, far inland. So how this ship could have possibly arrived here remains a huge mystery. One can only speculate that perhaps it was brought here by some ancient curse. We now arrive at the all-seeing Orlando Eye. 
It was believed that this monument was created to honor their gods, who would now use this as a giant eye to watch over all of the city, its good and its evil. So little is known about how to categorize this strange structure other than it is filed in our archives between Orlando A through H and Orlando J. I do not wish to alarm the squeamish, but what I'm about to show you is quite disturbing. You see, what you see before you is a torture device created to punish all those who would defy the will of the great King BB. These swings would lift higher and higher and higher in the air, spinning at a high velocity of speed until its victims could take no more. And at the bottom, we see reminders of those who had fallen, reminders not to defy the King's will. There was perhaps nothing more powerful, more ubiquitous, or more beloved in the late 20th and early 21st centuries than McDonald's. The golden arches were a symbol of hope to people the world over. And here on International Drive was the world's largest, proving that Orlando was the cultural center of the universe at that time. True to the customs at the time, directly across from the world's largest McDonald's was the world's crappiest Burger King. Further down the street, we now find ourselves at O Shucks Pub. Settled by the Irish after the Great Potato Famine, legend states that it once offered karaoke every freaking night. Such a feat now, of course, seems impossible, but these were the dreamers of dreams living through the best of times. And finally, we arrive at the beacon that drew visitors from all around the world to the civilization of Orlando, a place that was the dream of one man, Joey Elias Fun. We have arrived at Fun Spot, the premier destination of ancient Orlando. However, we dare not venture inside today, for it is as dangerous today as it was the day it was open. This has been Historian Winky Bottom. Thank you for joining me today for our expedition and a journey through time.